Assalamu alaikum students. This is your instructor Muhammad Umar Khatak for the subject project management. This is our 24th lecture and today we'll be starting chapter number 7. And the topic of our discussion is budgeting and cost estimation. Budget and cost estimation. Estimating project budgets. In order to develop a budget, we must forecast what resources the project will require, the required quantity of each, when they will be needed and how much they will cost, including the effects of potential price inflation. Uncertainty is involved in any forecast, though some forecasts have less uncertainty than others. An experienced cost estimator can forecast the number of bricks that will be used to construct a brick wall of known dimensions within 1-2%. to 2%. First priority is, of course, obtaining resources with which to do the work. Senior management approval of the project budget does exactly that. A budget is a plan for allocating resources. Thus, the act of budgeting is the allocation of scarce resources to the various endeavors of an organization. The outcomes of the allocation process often do not satisfy managers of the organization who must live and work under the budget constraints. It is, however, precisely the pattern of constraints in a budget that embodies organizational policy. The degree to which different activities of an organization are fully supported by allocation of resources is one measure of the importance placed on the outcome of the activity. Most of the senior managers we know try hard to be even-handed in the budgetary process, funding each planned activity at the right level, neither overfunding, which produces waste and encourages slack management, nor underfunding, which inhibits accomplishment and frustrates his com the commitment. The budget is simply one facet of a plan, nor is it merely an expression of organizational policy. It is also a control mechanism. The budget serves as, as a standard for comparison, a baseline from which to measure the difference between the actual and planned uses of resources. As the manager directs the deployment of resources to accomplish some desired objective, resource usage should be monitored carefully. This allows deviation from planned usage to be checked under the, against the program of the project, and exception reports can be generated if resources expenditure are not consistent with accomplishments. In many fields, cost estimation methods are well codified. For example, in the fields such as constructions, costs can be estimated by scaling the various cost elements appropriately. For example, building one mile of four-lane road can be estimated from the individual cost elements of previously constructed two-lane roads. For example, the asphalt cost may be double while the cost of the road's shoulders may be the same. Similarly, parametric estimation relies on a well-known statistical correlation between various factors such as the total cost of a house relative to the square feet of living area. The databases of purchasing departments include multitudes of information devoted to the techniques of estimation, estimating the quantities of materials and labor required to accomplish specific jobs. It is helpful to understand that developing project budgets is much more difficult than developing budgets for more permanent organizational activities. The influence of history is strong in the budget of any ongoing activity. Many entries are simply last year's figure plus X percent, where X is any number the budgeter feels can be lived with and is probably acceptable to the person or group who approves the budgets. While the project budgeter cannot always depend on tradition as a basis for estimating the current project budget, it is not uncommon for a budgeter to have budgets and audit reports for similar past projects to serve as guides. Although we maintain that all projects are unique, many are not very different from their predecessor and can serve as reasonable guides when forecasting current project budgets. Tradition also aids the estimation process in another way. A more interesting estimation technique that also depends on actual costs early in the life of a project is based on the earned value analysis. Early actual costs on a project are compared 
to their estimates and the remaining costs are adjusted by assuming a constant actual to estimate cost ratio. The assumption of a constant ratio gives the lowest average estimation error, 11%, of the five different predictors tested. For multi for multi-year projects, another problem is raised. The plans and schedules for such projects are set at the beginning of project life. But over the years, the forecast resource usage may be altered by the availability of alternate or new materials, machinery or personnel available at different costs than, we are, than, than were estimated, giving rise to both the risk of inflation and technological risk. The longer the project life, the less the project manager can trust that traditional methods and costs will be relevant. Tradition has still another impact on project budgeting. Every organization has its idiosyncrasies. One firm charges the project R&D budget with the cost of training sales and representatives on technical aspects of new product. Another adopts special property accounting practices for contract with the government. Unless the project manager understands the organizational accounting system, there is no way to exercise budgetary control over the project. The methods of the project budgeting described are intended to avoid these problems as much as possible, but complete avoidance is out of question. The project manager simply must be familiar with the organization's accounting system. One aspect of the cost estimating, estimation and budgeting that is not often discussed has to do with the actual use of resources as opposed to the accounting department's assumptions about how and when the resources will be used. For instance, presume that you have estimated that $5,000 of a given resource will be used in accomplishing a task that is estimated to require five weeks. The actual use of the resource may be none in the first week, $3,000 worth in the second week, none in the third week, $1,500 in the fourth week, and the remaining $500 in the last week. Unless this pattern of expenditure is detailed in the plan, the accounting department, which takes a linear view of the world, will sp spread the expenditure equally over the five-week period. This may not affect the project's budget, but it most certainly affects the project's cash flow. The project manager must be aware of both the resource requirement and the specific time pattern of resource usage. Another aspect of preparing budgets is especially important for project budgeting. Every expenditure or receipt must be identified with a specific project task, and with its associated milestone as, as well. Referring back to the previous project budgeting techniques, we see that each element in the WBS has a unique amount account number to which charges are occurred as work is done. These identifiers are needed for the project manager to exercise budgeting control. With these things in mind, the issue of how to gather input data for the budget becomes a matter of some concern. There are two fundamentally different strategies for data gathering, top-down and bottom-up budgeting. First, we'll study top-down budgeting. The strategy is based on collecting the judgment and experiences of top and middle managers and available past data concerning similar activities. These managers estimate overall project cost as well as the cost of the major sub-projects that comprise it. These cost estimates are then given to lower level managers who are expected to continue the breakdown into budget estimates for the specific task and work packages that comprise the sub-projects. The process continues to the lowest level. The process parallels the hierarchical planning process. The budget, like the project, is broken down into successively finer details, starting from the top and, and more aggregated level following the WBS. It is presumed that the lower level managers will argue for more funds if the budget allocation for allocation they have been granted is in their judgment insufficient for the task assigned. When senior managers insist on maintaining their budgetary positions based on their considerable past experience, Junior managers feel forced to accept what they perceive to be insufficient allocation to achieve the objectives to which they must commit. 
Discussions between the authors and a large number of managers support the contention that the lower level managers often treat the entire budgeting process as if it were a zero-sum game, a game in which any individual's gain is another individual's loss. Competition among junior managers is often quite intense. The advantage of this top-down process is that aggregate budgets can often be developed quite accurately. Though a few individual elements may be significantly in error, not only are budgets categories stable as a percent of the total budget, the, st the statistical distribution of each category is also stable, making for higher predictability. Another advantage of the top-down budget process is that small yet costly tasks need to be individually identified, nor need it be feared that some small but important aspect has been overlooked. The experience and judgment of the executive is presumed automatically to factor all such elements into the overall estimate. Questions put to subordinates, however, indicate that senior management has a strong bias towards underestimating cost. Bottom-up budgeting In this method, elemental tasks, their schedules and their individual budgets are constructed, again following their work breakdown structure. The people doing the work are consulted regarding times and budgets for the tasks to ensure the best level of accuracy. Initially, estimates are made in terms of resources, such as labor hours and materials. These are later converted to dollar equivalents. Standard analytic tools such as learning curve analysis and work sampling are employed where appropriate to improve the estimates. Differences of opinion are resolved by the usual discussion between senior and junior managers. If necessary, the project manager and the functional manager may enter the discussion in order to ensure the accuracy of the statements or the estimates. The resulting task budgets are aggregated to give the total direct cost of the budget. The project manager adds such indirect cost as general and administrative, possibly a project reserve for contingencies and then profit figure to arrive at the final project budget. Bottom-up budgets should be, and usually are, more accurate in detailed tasks, but it is critical that all elements be included. It is far more difficult to develop a complete list of tasks when constructing the list from the bottom up than from the top down. Just as the top down method may lead to budgetary game, game planning, playing, the bottom up process has its unique managerial budget games. For example, Individuals overstate their resource needs because they suspect that higher management will probably cut all budgets. Their suspicion is of course quite justified. Managers who are particularly persuasive sometimes win, but those who are consistently honest and have high credibility win more often. The advantages of the bottom-up processes are those generally associated with participative management. Individuals closer to the work are apt to have more accurate idea of resource requirements than their superiors or others not personally involved. In addition, the direct involvement of low-level managers in the budget preparation increases the likelihood that they will accept the result with a minimum of grumbling. Involvement also is a good managerial training technique, giving junior managers valuable experience in budget preparation as well as the knowledge of the operations required to generate a budget. While top-down budgeting is common, true bottom-up budgets are rare. Senior managers see the bottom-up process as risky. They tend not to be particularly trusting of ambitious subordinates who may overstate resources requirements in an attempt to ensure success and build empires. Besides, as senior managers note with some justification, the budget is the most important tool for control of the organization. They are understandably reluctant to hand over the control to subordinates, whose experience and motives are questionable. This attitude is carried on an, to an extreme in one large corporation that conducts several dozen projects simultaneously, each of which may last five to eight years and cost millions of dollars. Project managers do not participate in the budgeting process in the company, nor did they, until recently, have access to project budgets during their tenure as project managers. 
reconciling top management with a uh, top down with bottom up budget is obviously an area where the earlier principles of negotiation and conflict management would be useful work element costing the actual process of building a project budget either top down or bottom up or as we will suggest a combination of both tends to be a straightforward but tedious process each work element in this action plan or wbs is evaluated for its resource requirements and the cost of each resource is estimated suppose a work element is estimated to require 25 hours of labor by a technician the specific technician assigned to this job is paid 17 and a half dollars an hour overhead charges to the projects are 84% of the direct labor charges the appropriate cost appears to be 25 hours into 17.5 dollars an hour into 1.84 the overhead charges that makes it 805 dollars but the accuracy of this calculation depends on the precise assumption behind the 25 hour estimate industrial engineers have noted that during a normal 8 hour day no one actually works for all 8 hours even on an assembly line workers need breaks called personal time this covers such activities as visiting the water cooler the toilet having a cigarette blowing one's nose and all the other time consuming activities engaged in by normal people in a normal workplace A typical allowance for personal time is 12% of the total work time. If personal time was not included in the 25 hour estimate made above, then the cost calculation becomes 1.12 is the personal time multiplied by 25 hours of the work multiplied by 17.5 dollars an hour of the labor charges into 1.84 of the overhead and the answer would be Nine zero one dollars. The uncertainty in labor cost estimate lies in the estimates of hours to be expended, not including personal time and shows and underestimate. Direct costs for resources and machinery are charged directly to the project and are not usually subject to overhead charges. If a specific machine is needed by the project and is the property of a functional department, the project may pay. for it by transferring funds from the project budget to the functional department's budget the charge for such machines will be an operating cost plus a depreciation charge based on either time or the number of operating cycles use of general office equipment for example coffee machines drafting equipment and coffee makers and co copying machines is often included in the general overhead charge in addition to these char uh, charges there is also a general and administrative charge this is composed of the cost of senior management the various staff functions and also other expenses not included in the overhead g and a general and administrative charges are are a fixed percent of either the direct cost or the total of all direct and indirect cost thus a fully costed work element would include direct cost labor resources and spe special machinery plus overhead and general and administrative charges we advise the project manager to prepare two budgets one with overheads general and administrative charges and one without the full cost budget is used by the accounting group to estimate the profit earned by the project The budget that that contains only direct cost gives the project manager the information required to manage the project without being confounded with cost over the which the project manager has no control. This is the end of the lecture. Thank you.